Okay, so we're going to be solving second order linear um, ODs. These will have constant coefficients, right? Whereas the theory before with finding that second solution, uh, we were allowing P of X and Q of X to be functions of X. Here, no functions of X at all, right? Except for the Y and its derivatives. So this only works when you have constant coefficients. Uh, think about what's it saying. It's saying that you have a function and its derivative and its second derivative, and then by adding multiples of those together, you get zero. In order for that to make sense, you would need the function and its derivatives to all be more or less the same. But what function does this occur? The exponential function, right? So since e to the x has that cool property where its derivatives are pretty much the same as it, except for multiples, um, we're going to say, well, what if it's exponential? And now we're going to put a constant up here called gamma, and we're going to try to figure out what that is. Because depending on what these coefficients are, that gamma could be a different number. How does gamma look like again? Uh, gamma is written like that. So kind of an up sideways. Oh, okay, kind of like fish. breast cancer. Or yeah, like a ribbon symbol. Yeah. Uh, but you notice that on some of the scripts, the loop is really not even visible, and it looks almost like a Y. That's what the author uses. Uh, some people will use a lambda for this. Oh, I, like, I like lambda. Yeah. But I wanted to go along with the author, so we're using gamma. So uh, let's take these derivatives. These are always going to be the same, because you're always starting off with this. And you just use the chain rule. So what's the chain rule going to give me when I take the derivative? It's going to give me a give me a gamma out front, right? In fact, every time I take a derivative, it's just going to bring another gamma out front. So second derivative, you're going to have a gamma squared. Third derivative will give you a gamma cube, but we don't need a third derivative. Right. And again, these first two steps will end up not being necessary once you do this enough times. You build a shortcut right to the characteristic equation that we're going to get. Uh, but let's go ahead and substitute these in for now. Here's our differential equation. And we're going to replace second derivative with this. Well, you all could be typing instead of writing on paper. <laughs> and there's the function itself. All right, now we're going to solve for gamma. Notice that we can actually factor off the exponential. Because the exponential is always going to appear for any value of gamma in all three of these terms. So you can factor that off. You can divide everything by e to the gamma x because it's never going to be 0. So what's going to be left? 6 gamma squared. Hey, can I just use lambda, Nicole? On your paper, yeah. Because it looks like I'm writing a y. We'll make it more like that. I mean, some people just go to x um, because you're going back to solving a quadratic equation now and you want to figure out what this is and you've probably been taught how to do that where the variable is x most of the time these will factor but remember if it doesn't factor you'd use the quadratic formula you're always going to be able to get two solutions on this thing um, alright so let's solve this thing does this one factor? Said lambda is just a constant. I mean, excuse me, gamma is just a constant. Yeah. Right, so we know it's going to be plus 1, minus 1, and this could be 6 and 1, or 2 and 3. 
Uh, in order to get a one there in the middle, we need it to be two and three, right? So that factors it, right? Okay. So what is the two solutions? Uh, negative one half and positive one third, right? You don't have to, but if you want more fun, then you can do it. Students that don't know how to factor like the quadratic equation, I'm guessing you all learn how to factor. Does that seem right? Okay, so you get these two numbers. This isn't the only option, but if you do get two real solutions in step two, then you can jump right to your answer. And uh, how would that look for this problem? Do you have like a button up there for your uh, gamma? Yeah. I have a gamma button. Oh, so how are you typing in step for all the <laughs> and you can write it like that, right? So you can check that those are linearly independent by dividing them and trying to fool around it. To get a constant, uh, it's not going to work because they are linearly independent. And that's it. So you can get the particular solution if you have initial conditions. We saw how that works with the previous methodology. Um, and I, maybe one of these examples will have that. But we've got to do this two more times with two other examples because. What happens if you get a repeated root, and what happens if you get complex roots? So, ready to move on? So, a cool application for solving quadratic equations. I tried to tell it to my college algebra students, and they just, just didn't get it. Just like except. It was probably because I used gamma instead of lambda, right, Trevor? I would have called it epsilon. Or omega. Epsilon, yeah. And the delta epsilon thing is like one of the first things they try to throw at you in calculus, where you're just like, what are you doing? Did you all do that delta epsilon proofs? Epsilon, no. Epsilon, I got to a vector calc when you get into uh, regions, like uh, neighborhood open disks. So, Notice how we went from here to here, but can't you tell just by looking at this what that's going to be? Right? So you should be able to look at the original ODE, and then this is called the characteristic equation. You should be able to jump right to that once you see that pattern, because it's the same coefficients, and the derivative turns into the degree of the monomial of each term. So yeah. Okay, the form is always going to be in 1 equals e to the gamma x. For, for constant coefficient, uh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to copy these down because I have them right here. And our differential equation And look very similar to the other one. And since we can again always factor off that exponential, you're going to be able to get the characteristic that you might have been able to jump to right from the start.
Let me try to get this all on one page. So yeah, again, compare the ODE with this quadratic equation. See how to jump right to it? Well, now that uh, gamma is not a variable, it's a constant. So, right? Yeah. But I, guess I mean, we're it's not varying. It's it's got fixed values, but it's an unknown. Thus, we use a variable. You can use variables in two ways, right? As variables, as like literally things that are varying and changing, but also as just unknown numbers that we but want to figure out what they are. We're actually treating it like an unknown when we do the formula. Right. There, it's, a fixed, it's a fixed constant. We just don't know what it is. This one factors, it's actually a perfect square trinomial, right? You see the pattern? So it's 2 gamma minus 3 times 2 gamma minus 3. Sorry. I feel like a lambda does look more intimidating than gamma. You mean less intimidating? You think lambda looks less more, intimidating? More intimidating. Okay. It's like a, you know, it's also you said it have like wavelength of light or something. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's pretty intimidating. But that's just me, right? Okay, so we're only going to get one gamma here, and what is it going to be? Three halves. Now, if you just get one solution, then you still need a second, right? It's a second order OD, it needs two linearly independent solutions. Well, one of them is probably e to the 3 halves x. But what is the second? Um, you can actually use the process that we went through in the first methodology, go through that whole process and find the second. And I'll spare you that details, but the second is going to be x times this. But the, the way you show that's the second solution is by that formula for u. You go through that, that formula for u will give you x. And if u is x, then y2 is x times y1. Uh, I forgot to say here, you know, we already know that y1 is e to the 3 halves x. So y2 is going to be x times e to the 3 halves x. OK, so if they're two different numbers, you've got e to the 1 plus e to the other. If they're the same, you've got e to that number, and then you've got x times e to that number, right? So try to start remembering these patterns. All right, now that we have two, we can put them together and get the fundamental set of solutions. No, these aren't functions when we do this quadratic factoring, right? I mean, hold on. Uh, no, the quadratic factoring, that's just for gamma, which just ends up being a constant. Now these look very similar, but they are linearly independent because yes, one is a multiple of the other, but it's not a constant multiple of the other, right? If you divide them, you're just going to get the x, and that shows that they're linearly independent. You could also do the run scheme to verify. I guess for, for the sake of what u is, and that is you always have a k out there, when you're, when you're deciding your p of x, do you really, you, can you, can you just disregard the, uh, the coefficients out there? You know yeah. I mean? Yeah, we talked about doing that. You can just say it's 1 or just dis disregard it. Because essentially you can multiply it by the reciprocal. And look what's going to happen at the end anyway is you're going to have constants yeah. here. And so those are going to be determined. And in the end, you would get the same constant yeah, out front. So. And until you get the initial conditions and get those constants, it doesn't really matter what you put out front. Okay, so we've seen two real numbers. We've seen them both be the same. 
right? The last case, which when you're doing real numbers, is that there are no real solutions. They're actually a pair of complex conjugates, right? Um, so we're going to solve this next one, not with factoring, but with the quadratic equation. Let's try to jump right to the characteristic equation. What's the characteristic equation? Right. Minus two gamma, gamma plus three. Right. Oleg, like you were one step ahead of us. You're ready to actually solve for gamma. <laughs> so yeah, but we wanted to just get the quadratic equation first, and then we'll we'll jump to solving it. All right. So there's not going to factor because there aren't two numbers that multiply to three and add to negative two. Uh, not two real numbers. Right. So um, in this case. If it doesn't factor, uh, use the quadratic formula. It might still lead to two real numbers, but they're probably irrational, so you wouldn't be able to factor and get them. Uh, or it might lead to this other case. So we need a big fraction, and we need a minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So these are the solutions to the equation. And we can simplify this by the opposite of negative 2 is 2. And negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, and then that's 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. So that's how you're going to get the imaginary part, right? 4 minus 12. And then 2 in the denominator. So you want to get this in the separate a plus bi form. So you really need to separate the real parts from the imaginary parts. Um, so you can think of splitting up the fraction. It's 2 over 2 plus or minus square root of 2. So it's negative 8 over 2. And 2 over 2 is just 1. And the square root of negative 8 is, you can actually bring a 2 out of that, right? And then so it would be 2i, right? Because the square root of 8 is 2 root 2, and the 2's cancel. And then the negative comes out as an i. So, if you get these complex solutions, there's going to be a real part, which is called alpha, and an imaginary part, which is called beta. And then the general solution is actually this exponential trig melange. So, if it was a square. so what is my alpha? For my problem, alpha is 1, right? So alpha is the real part. And then the imaginary part is the 2, so my beta is 2. So here's what my solution will look like. Alpha is 1, so get rid of that. And beta is 2. You just did. So if you get the alpha plus beta, it's e to the alpha x, and then cosine beta x plus sine beta x. Right? And the constants go on the inside. You could actually separate it. If you distributed, you would see what y1 and y2 are. Right? They both have the exponential. y1 has a cosine, y2 has a sine, or vice versa. 
and that's it. So we'll be using this extensively. This will become the first step in a much larger problem that we'll do in the next week um, where we're solving the non-homogeneous version. We'll start by solving the homogeneous. It'll always be one of these three cases. You'll quickly throw out those two, and then you'll get another part to the solution to add to it. So I want to be able to do these fast. Okay. So if you're having trouble remembering how to do it, um, Oleg's got it memorized. He'll help you out. What? From here. <laughs>